As opposition to the Catholic Church grew, the Pope became desperate for a solution to his Protestant problem. In 1534, a man named Ignatius Loyola founded a radical society of Catholics whose purpose was to fight against the Protestant reformers. On September 27, 1540, Pope Paul III formally established the Jesuits as an official Catholic organization. Part of the Jesuit extreme oath of induction says, I furthermore promise and declare that I will, when opportunity present, make and wage relentless war secretly or openly against all heretics, Protestants and liberals as I am directed to do to extirpate and exterminate them from the face of the whole earth. From 1545 to 1564, the Council of Trent met and condemned the enemies of the Catholic Church. In the fourth session they stated, Furthermore, to check unbridled spirits, it decrees that no one relying on his own judgment shall, in matters of faith and morals pertaining to the edification of Christian doctrine, distorting the Holy Scriptures, in accordance with his own conceptions, presumed to interpret them contrary to that sense which Holy Mother Church, to whom it belongs to judge of their true sense and interpretation. This council decrees and ordains that in the future the Holy Scriptures, especially the old Vulgate edition, be printed in the most correct manner possible, and that it shall not be lawful for anyone to print or to have printed any books whatsoever dealing with sacred doctrinal matters without the name of the author or in the future to sell them or even to have them in possession unless they first have been examined and approved by the ordinary under penalty of anathema and fine prescribed by the last council of the latter. In the 25th session they condemn the writings of men like Luther, Zwingli, Calvin, Balthasar, Friedberg, Schwenkfield, and others like these, whatever may be their name, title, or nature of their heresy, are absolutely forbidden. The books of other heretics, however, which deal professedly with religion, are absolutely condemned. Finally, all the faithful are commanded not to presume to read or possess any books contrary to the prescriptions of these rules or the prohibition of this list. And if anyone should read or possess books by heretics or writings by any other author condemned and prohibited by reason of heresy or suspicion of false teaching, he incurs immediately the sentence of excommunication. He on the other hand who reads or possesses books prohibited under another name shall, besides incurring the guilt of mortal sin, be severely punished according to the judgment of the bishops. In 1605, the Jesuits tried to assassinate King James and the members of Parliament. On the morning of November the 5th, Guy Fawkes was discovered guarding 36 barrels of gunpowder, which had been hidden under the floor where King James would be standing in a matter of hours. This plan is known today as the Gunpowder Plot. The conspirators were captured and executed. God protected King James and the translators of the authorized version. But the Jesuits had another plan. If the people of England wanted an English Bible, then the Jesuits would write one for them. The Reims New Testament was released in 1582 and the Dewey Old Testament was finished in 1610, exactly one year before the authorized version of 1611. Over the next 300 years, the authorized version would produce more spiritual fruit than any other book in world history. This amazing Bible produced heroes of the faith like Roger Williams, John Wesley, founder of the Methodist Church, his brother Charles, famous hymn writer, George Whitfield, the 
famous evangelist, Jonathan Edwards, David Brainerd, Peter Cartwright, William Carey, missionary to India, Charles G. Finney, Isaac Watts, famous hymn writer, Hudson Taylor, missionary to China, George Mueller, the founder of the Salvation Army, William Booth, Fanny Crosby, the blind hymn writer, the fiery Methodist evangelist, Sam Jones, Gypsy Smith, missionary Jonathan Goforth, the famous preacher, Charles Hayden Spurgeon, David Livingston, missionary to Africa, the evangelist, J. Wilbur Chapman, C. I. Schofield, Philip Bliss, hymn writer, the great evangelist, Dwight Lyman Moody, Billy Sunday, and J. Frank Norris. For nearly 300 years, the King James Version had been the Bible of choice for the Christian world. Its preaching led to the salvation of millions of souls. The Christian church enjoyed peace and prosperity like never before. Missionaries were sent to almost every country, and the gospel of Jesus Christ was preached all over the world. The Roman Catholic Church had lost control of the English-speaking world.